it's Ashley with At Home with Ashley and today our project is we're going to take this door out of our playroom, it just leads to a closet and we're going to replace it with a custom built bookcase so it opens like a hidden door and you get some storage out of it. Mostly I'm in it for the storage because I really want to store our games in a place where my son can see them and play with them more often. So. With that, we're gonna make a secret door, which is also gonna be great for hide and go seek since this is the playroom. So I'm really excited for this. One thing I do need to say is this is a more advanced project. This is not a simple DIY. I call it an advanced DIY. So if you are really good with tools, please proceed. You kind of need to use a router with this. We're custom making a bookcase. It's moving and doing the trim with that it makes it a little more complicated. So just so you know, it's really tricky. So the first thing you need to do for this project is to take the trim off the door. So because we want it to look secret hidden, you need to get that, get rid of that. And our door is very crooked, our door frame. And because of that, my husband's going to build a whole new door frame and we're using this really thick um, wood to do it so that that can support the bookcase. So we're straightening it up by using a lot of shims with um, the wood trim and that will be the frame. If you have a frame that's already straight on your doorway, you don't need to do this step. One of the key parts of this project is creating a test piece. So all it needs to do is like, all it needs to be is a really thin piece of plywood and you're going to cut it for what you think the footprint of your bookcase is gonna be. And you can only know what this is by cutting it out and testing it. So you cut out your piece of wood, you nail it into the bottom frame and you swing it and you see if it can open and close. And if it can't open and close, you need to take it out and cut it smaller. So once you get it to a good size, that's how you're going to know what the depth and the width of your bookcase is going to be. And then you can measure the height of your frame and take you know, maybe a half an inch off and that's going to be the height of your bookcase. So now you know what you're gonna do for the next step. And also nailing it in is really important because that's how you figure out where your pivot head hinge is gonna go. And the hardware for this project is really important. Um, I'll link mine below, I just got it on Amazon. And because it really needs to be heavy duty, um, because the whole bookshelf pivots on this one hinge that goes in the top and in the bottom. And so you gotta get the right thing. A piano hinge is just not sturdy enough. So once you know the size of your bookcase, you're gonna start building it. And what we did was we cut ours out of three quarters inch plywood and we probably could have done something. I think we could have gotten by it with a half inch for the frame and the shelves and a quarter inch for the back. So you can save some money that way that we didn't, but we wanted ours to be very sturdy and it is. <laughs> so what we did was we cut out the top, the bottom, plus an extra piece so that we can do two thicknesses at the bottom and then the sides and then five shelves. And the way we figured out our shelves was I'm gonna put games on this and most of my games come in a uniform box that's about 11 inches tall. So I wanted the space between inch, each shelf to be 12 inches and that made for five shelves. And another thing I want to note is we do wish we had made two thicknesses for the top as well because the hinge is really big that you put it in. And so if it's thin on the top or the bottom, you can see part of the hinge. And so it just is more beautiful if you can have two thicknesses or if you have something to cut the metal and trim the hinge so it's a little bit skinnier. And then for the bookcase, all you need to do to put it together is have some screws. So we're screwing ours in on the sides. Um, so you build the frame first, kind of the box, and then you just need to screw in the shelves on the inside. And um, you need to try to make it as straight as possible. And this is easier said than done because we struggled with this because you are um, going to have this swinging in the door, it can't be crooked or else it won't swing correctly. So you need to make sure your cuts are all nice and straight so that everything can be screwed together to be a perfectly square, rectangular bookcase box. The next step for this project is to install the pivot hinge. And so first you gotta know where you're gonna put it. And we needed the template that marked the bottom of the door frame. And so you need to mark the um, bookcase. So you can just take your template, which is super handy, and nail it um, and the top and the bottom. Make sure the hinge is gonna be in the spot you want it. And that will mark the bookcase. 
And then for the door frame, you just need to use a level, a laser level or a plumb bob, and that can mark the top. And then you can also use your um, template up there to double check that it can be inserted and um, swing easily. And then the trickiest part of the pivot hinge is it needs to be routed out or you need to use a chisel to clear out some spot, um, some space in the top of the bookcase, the bottom of the bookcase, the top of the frame, the bottom of the frame, so that the hinge can be inserted. So this is tricky. We used our um, router and it's kind of a mess and it feels a little more skilled than it should be. It's, it's a little bit of a specialized piece. So you gotta clear out the spots for that and then you're just going to attach it with screws and also um, you need to drill out holes for the hinge pin. And so the top and the bottom of the bookcase, those need to be drilled out. And then for the top of the bookcase, you need a second hole and that's the access hole. And in that hole is where you're gonna be able to put a screwdriver and that will either um, lower or bring up the hinge pin. And so that's how you kind of get the bookcase in and then you can use your access hole and put the pin down and that's how you get it in. And so for us, once we got it in, we saw it didn't move perfectly, so we had to make some adjustments. And that's just kind of how it is. It's a little bit of trial and error, but the pin, the pivot hinge is really cool and it works really nicely to move this big bookcase around. So now that the bookcase is inserted, you need to trim it out. And for ours, um, because it's opening into the room, um, on the left side and the top, the trim is just gonna be attached to the wall pretty much like normal. And then to the right, the trim is going to be attached to the bookcase that kind of acts like the door stop so that the um, bookcase, that's how the, it stops from going all the way back and forth. So I wanted to use some fancier trim. Most people just use like a thick, sturdy craftsman trim. And if that matches your house, go for it. That's gonna be the easiest option. Since it doesn't match my house, what we did was we used a quarter inch plywood and then we layered that with um, other trim and ours is about six inches wide and that is so it will cover up the door frame and where the old trim used to be so that there's like as little patching as humanly possible. So that a quarter inch plywood really makes the other trim nice and sturdy. Um, so we did that on the three sides and we're kind of reusing old trim so the top doesn't actually match the sides so I, um, a while ago when we were in St. Louis, we bought these corner blocks. So we're using that on the top corners. And bonus, it adds like instant aging character since these are taken from an old house. Once all of the trim is in, there's a lot of finish work that needs to be done. Caulking, the seams, um, wood filling, all of the nail holes, sanding that smooth. And like anything else, a really good project means really good prep and really good finish work. And this step is like so tedious, but it's totally worth it. So for the bookcase, I wanted to paint it the same color as the room, the whole room and all of the trim is Teresa's green. It's a fair and ball color. So I primed it first with their mid-tone primer and then I painted it all the same color and I'm so pumped with how it looks. I think it's super fun. And another thing I wanted to point out is when you open the bookcase, on the right hand side, you can see where the frame is and it looks really bad. And a lot of people I've seen just leave this, but I didn't want to see it every time I opened the door and felt like it wasn't finished. So what we did was um, my husband put in little pieces of wood where there was space between the frame and the um, old drywall. And then he used drywall mud to fill the seam and to fill the gap between the old drywall and that new door frame. And it took probably four coats of drywall mud and then he did a little coat where he put it on with a roller so that it's the same texture as the rest of the wall. And this took a while because you have to kind of wait between coats, but I think it's totally worth it because it looks so much more finished. Once the drywall mud was all done and dry, I primed that and then painted it the same color as the bookcases. When we first started this project, I thought about doing an Ikea hack and buying an Ikea shelf for this project. We ended up deciding not to because we thought it wouldn't be sturdy enough. Honestly, at this point in the project, we were regretting that. And we wish we had just gotten one and shored it up, like added some um, wood at the bottom, added wood at the top, maybe some on the backing, um, just because it was really tricky to build our own and to make it more DIY friendly. I think you could buy one, but you might need to add in some extra wood so that it's sturdy enough for that pivot hinge to be able to hold it. 
So once the paint was done, it was time to style everything. And I am using a bunch of stuff I got from the flea market, which it was so fun to collect for because I'm doing a theme. I have all the vintage bookshelf games that I'm adding on, and then I'm doing like a game theme. So I have like old marbles, billiard balls, um, dice, that kind of stuff. And then I also just collected some old beautiful things I thought my son would like. I have some really nice boxes for cards to go into, some beautiful old art, and I just think it turned out really nice. I'm so happy with it. I think it looks gorgeous, let alone that it's a door that you can walk into. And I just, it's so fun. We probably lost about five inches of storage in the closet, which was totally worth it to me because we gained about 10 inches of, you know, bookcase space. So we, in the end, we gained five inches more and the inside of the closet just has a little bit less and it's still very accessible. You can go in it. It's great for hide and go seek. Um, and I just think the when it's closed, it looks so beautiful and then it's an element of fun. So to me, it was a win-win situation. This took us about a week and a half to finish, um, which is longer than most of our projects, but for something big like this, we had to figure out and build custom. It was totally worth it. And I'm so proud of my husband that he figured it out because I think it turned out really beautifully. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm gonna link in the description to all the supplies and also my blog post with a written tutorial if you prefer learning things that way. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to create more like this. I kinda wanna make one for my kitchen if I can talk my husband into making another one. Uh, but I hope you loved it.